Hi everyone and welcome along. Today is our last YouTube tutorial of the year before we begin the advent calendar tutorials. So if you don't know about that, basically what we're doing is one tutorial per day throughout advent, so the 1st to the 24th of December, and you can get your hands on a digital download of the advent calendar template over on my Etsy store, so the uh, details are all in the episode notes below. But enough of that, what are we doing today? Well, we are revisiting the most popular Christmas tutorial I did from last year and giving it a little bit of an update. The Christmas Robins were done in loose watercolour and they're so easy to do and really addictive. So grab your paints and let's get started. It's so nice to return to a, a previous project, an old favourite. Um, and in fact, if you don't remember these Robins, they ended up becoming a Christmas card, um, which is actually available to buy uh, on my Etsy, so just have a look in the episode notes if you want to get your hands on some of these before Christmas. Um, but yeah, you can see this lovely little loose watercolour technique. Um, I found a lot of you were uh, addicted to painting these over and over again, and it's lovely because you can paint them in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and there's so much character in such a simple painting. So. Obviously we did these last year um, and now I'm going to sort of just revisit it and um, come up with a nice little composition. So I'm going to sit some robins on a branch of a tree. So I'm just with my pencil, I'm just going to make a, a rather jaggedy branch. Uh, that's literally all we need, isn't it? Um, as, our, as our guide and the colours we need are burnt sienna. Then um, I used yellow ochre, and at the time, I talked about using the shadowy dregs in my palette. Um, and there are still shadowy dregs in my palette. What I mean by that is there's usually a bit of sort of gray, murky sludge hanging around. Um, but if you don't, if you have a very neat, clean palette with none of that going on, what you want is a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of a blue colour, French ultramarine blue will work really nicely. And then yellow ochre just to give it a little bit of warmth. And that's going to form the body of our robins. And then for the red breast, we've got cadmium red here, but I also want cadmium orange just woken up because it features heavily in the, the red of the, the breast of the robin. So I'm just mixing those two together to get a sort of orangey red colour ready to go. And when you're painting loose watercolours, it's really important to get your colours all mixed up in advance so they're ready to go because it's all about timing with loose watercolour painting. You want things to be, um, you want the page to be the right level of wetness to get your paints on and get them blending nicely. Now, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous to revisit this and, and paint them again because I haven't painted them for a whole year. But, oh, let's have a go. There's a little splodge of red paint. I'll just, just get rid of that. There we go, just a little bit of water and then we can blot that out. Okay, right, enough full starts, let's go for it. So. I'm going to take with my size 4 brush because I'm going to do these a little bit smaller and I'm going to draw in a sort of circle of this wet sludgy grey yellowy ochre colour and then I'm going to just give a little bit of a overlapping oval as a head and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some burnt sienna and just run that over the back and then I'm going to start working in just a few curves and then a little flick for a little wing and then for a little tail I'm just going to use the belly of the brush and that's all I'm going to do with that burnt sienna. I'm going to clean my brush off. And now I'm going to pick up the red and I'm going to very gently dab that in. 
and I'm going to leave it because it's going to bleed in of its own accord. Okay, let's paint some more, shall we? Some different, some different poses. So I'm going to try one just sort of, he's going to have his head sort of down over the edge of the branch. looking at someone down there. So that circle will sort of just slightly sort of smooth into the overlapping oval head. And then we'll have the brown coming over. And we'll have the brown coming down over there because we're sort of seeing almost like the back of his head. So you have to be really careful when you're painting in this very, very loose style, the amount of water you use. You can see how far it travels. And the beauty of these robins is it really doesn't matter if the red sort of travels a bit further than you, you feel. But in just sort of holding off painting in the, the red here, what I'm doing is allowing this sort of yellow ochre greyness to just seep in and dry just a fraction more, meaning every sort of second that I let it rest, I am me I'm gonna sort of have the the paint will travel a little less far. So that's my very garbled way of saying the longer you let it dry into the page, then the slower the blend will move when you paint that in. So let's do that. Okay, really nice. Oh it's fun. It's fun to paint these robins again. Okay, let's have one up here. We'll have him right on the end of the branch. And we'll have him, we'll have him looking out. So he's sort of, his head's up there. And just over the top. So you can see that the brown eye paint very much touches the outer edge of the dry page. So you get a nice crisp brown edge and then it blends inwards to the wet circle itself. And that is enough and that will travel up. So you can see it's traveling up already. Okay, so I'm going to fill in a few more robins on here and then we can put in our branch. So my robins are all painted and they have all dried now. Um, and you can see how the blends have, have worked. You get that nice, just little bit down the middle between the two colours of the sort of paler ochre colour. So now we're going to paint in the branch. Now I know that we tend to, well, we associate robins with Christmas when all the leaves have fallen off the trees or the last sort of autumn leaves are just hanging on. Um, but also we do see robins when, well, just a little earlier in the year as well. So we don't have to be limited to just painting bare branches. Um, so I am going to do first uh, with a mixture of burnt sienna and Payne's Grey just to get a really nice sort of cold brown colour that contrasts a little bit with the burnt sienna on our branches. With a size 4 brush, I am just going to paint in a sort of gnarly, wobbly branch um, and I can make it a bit thicker to start off with. And um, just by painting these two sort of parallel lines together, you can see we can get a little bits of unpainted space to create a bit of sort of interest, the light and shade on the branch. Also really getting in some of that really dark Payne's Grey makes the branch look really nice and wintry. Um, and I am roughly following the pencil guide I drew in, but I want my robins to be just a little bit higher than the branch, so I'm just drawing it a little lower. And then of course we can put in some extra twigs coming off the side. If 
find the best way to achieve good branches is to not think about it too much. I mean, by all means, I think when you're first starting out, have a look outside the window. Hopefully there might be a, a tree branch you can have a look at, um, but I find that that always helps. And then once you've got a rough idea of how these things look, then just go for it. Um, so that was all done with the size four brush. I didn't need a smaller brush to do those smaller, smaller branches. And now I'm just getting the sap green and I'm just going to put a, a few little leaves and we're going to add a bit of French ultramarine blue just to keep the nice cold bluey green going so I'm just going to very simply pop in some sort of just single brush stroke leaves. Doesn't have to be every every branch, just wherever you see fit really. So we'll let this dry 100% because I don't want to smudge anything with my hand and then we'll rub out that little bit of pencil and pop in the eyes, beak and feet of the robins. So I've rubbed out the pencil and um, everything's dry and I've got a nice small brush, I've got a 3 tenths brush and I've mixed up some Mars Black and we're going to pop in some branches. So uh, not branches we're going to pop in some <laughs> feet and beaks and everything okay so um you can see i'm starting the legs really far back on this robin and then it's rather nice to have something to actually cling on to here there we go so we can just paint in those feet like that and then the little beak that looks like a bit of a funny nose there we go and just a little eye like that so let's do some more of these legs starting really far back angling right forwards then just curl those claws three over the front and one over the back. You might not always see that one over the back. And then I think it might, I sort of wanted to have this one looking over his shoulder at that robin there. So you can really give them some nice character with these beaks and, and noses and things. Um, and then I think Sometimes they're sort of just sat more down on their haunches, so he can be like that. Then, the, then this one will have him in a bit more of a nuthatch stance. Um, if you ever wondered what my favourite bird was, it's a nuthatch. Robin's uh, definitely in the top, the top five, I'd say. So we just have that little claw just in the back poking through and this one, this robin is looking down. And this robin is looking at that robin going, what are you looking at? Has he spotted a worm? Anyway, there we go. So this tutorial is the last tutorial of 2021 before we launch into our watercolor advent calendar. I've been talking about it a little bit on here, but if you don't know about it, we're going to do a tutorial every single day in advent, um, 1st of December to the 24th of December is what we're going for. And um, if you want to do it exactly like me, you can download a digital 
copy of the watercolour template I'm going to be using and print it off at home and the, uh, the link to buy that is in the episode notes below on my Etsy store. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for another wonderful year. This has just been so fulfilling for me and Ant. We enjoy creating these videos for you so much um, and I really hope you enjoyed revisiting the Robins with me. Thanks so much for watching. I've really enjoyed creating all these festive watercolour tutorials for you over the past month. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this one, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with it. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit subscribe and that little notification bell. Until next time, bye.